nation's favourite celebrity. Wow. Paired up with an expert. Get it sorted. And a classic car. She's beautiful. Who was steaming? Their mission to scar Britain for antiques. Is that antique? I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. The aim to make the biggest profit at auction. But it's no easy ride. There's a dog chasing us! Who will find a hidden gem? Love that. Who will take the biggest risk? Will anybody follow expert advice? Yeah, okay, I know what that means. Yeah. There will be worthy winners. Yes! And valiant losers. You go Disaster. Put your pedal to the metal. Let's go shopping. Woohoo! This is the Celebrity Antiques Road Trip. Oh, lovies! Today's trippers are already getting into character. It's great that you think I look like an antiques expert. But with you looking like an eccentric millionaire, <laughs> we can both blag it. Yes, we're on the road with fellow actors and very good chums, Nigel Harmon and David Bradley. It's nice to spend time with you, actually. I think it's about six years or so since we... Uh, last kissed. Uh, uh, last straw veil over that, shall we? <laughs> Is that <all> <laughs> Seasoned actor Nigel is a regular on TV dramas and is well known for gracing our screens as Downton Abbey's dastardly valet. David's legendary career has seen him play iconic roles in big hits such as Game of Thrones and the box office smash Harry Potter. My granddad was a uh, pawnbroker, so I'm hoping that I will channel him. There's a bit of composition about this thing, but we're not going to fall out, are we? Well, no, but I have bought my knuckle duster in case it gets tasty. <laughs> Steady. Their chariot today is this rather splendid Porsche 968. It's lovely. I've never even been a passenger or driven in a Porsche in all my 99 years. Have you been to an auction before? I don't think I have. Do we get to do the paddle? You know when you hold up your paddle oh, to bid? Does that happen? We don't bid ourselves. Oh, right, can't we oh. push the prices up on our own oh, gear? No, no. <laughs> hmm. I think I'd better explain the rules for Nigel's benefit. You get £400 each to spend, and here are your two experts to help you spend it. The sun is shining. Have you got your sun cream on? I have, and yeah. we've got a roof, or no roof. It's gorgeous. Oh, we don't seem to have a wing mirror here, Tash. What happened? Um, well, just you keep your right. That's all yeah. I see. <laughs> Sun-kissed auctioneers Natasha Raskin Sharp and Christina Trevanian in their 65 Triumph Herald are on hand to keep the lads in line. So David Bradley yes. looks particularly sweet, doesn't he? And Nigel is a heartthrob, is he not? Well, and you would think butter wouldn't melt. Yes. Alas. But <laughs> they are two of the baddest boys on the screen, aren't they? Oh, they're gentlemen, really. Good luck. Thank you, and you. I hope we're still talking to each other, buddy. Yeah, well, me too. I yeah. hope there's not going to be tears before bedtime. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Easy, Tiger. <laughs> Hi, oh, my Hi. God. Hello. <laughs> you can barely get nice out. nice driving the Porsche. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Hi, yes, Jay. Good morning, Tasha. Hello. Hi. Thank My goodness. You. Yeah, I love this. Bit of vintage. Yeah. Absolutely. 1965. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. You can tell that just by looking at yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Most <laughs> impressive. This is how good we are. <laughs> yeah. You fancy having a bash with this one? Well, yes, yes. If I can remember what to do with my uh, with my feet. <laughs> um, okay, you'll be yeah, fine. You'll I think, be fine. I think we'll, we'll step <laughs> we'll step yeah. way we back. Just we're just going to we're just going to yeah. just give you lots of room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Let's make tracks then. Oh, oh, oh. oh. you might want Thank your hat. Thank you. I'm sunroof. Thank you. Here we go, Whee! Yep, I think it's going to be a hot one. You were naughty in EastEnders and very naughty in Downton Abbey. Yeah. I was a big Downton fan. Were you? But I was very cross with you. I uh, know, people were. It was the morning after it happened, I was walking along the road in Covent Garden and I saw this homeless guy. I and mean, as I went past him, he looked up and he went, Naughty, naughty. <laughs> and talking of bad boys, viewers of a nervous disposition might want to leave the room for a moment. Your character in Game of Thrones, I have to admit, I haven't seen the scene in which you are particularly brutal at this red wedding. Well, you better catch up, because there's, better... there's, there's going to be a quiz. I oh, right. <laughs> thought you were going to say there's going to be a reenactment. <laughs> Apparently, it was very, very gory. Well, it was. And this guy, he's a family man, and he's got about. 15 daughters to marry off. 
Rob Stark promises to marry one of his daughters and then reneges on the deal. So, what do you do? You know, you, you massacre the entire family. <laughs> OK, let's hope none of the dealers get on the wrong side of him today. On this trip, we'll be zigzagging our way down the country from Oxfordshire to Somerset before heading back north for an auction in Winchcombe. But Nigel and Christina's first stopping off point today is in Wantage. What's your plan? My only plan really is to put all my faith in you, and therefore, if it all goes wrong, yeah, just I just blame you, yeah, that's and fine. I will that come also out happens a lot. Got free. <laughs> But I think it's time to start, isn't it? I don't think we can put it off any longer. No. You're okay. going to have to actually do some antiquing. I'm going to get my game face on. Yeah. Oh, gosh, that is quite mean. It's really, I thought it was a bit pouty. You could hone your technique here, Nigel. Your first shopping experience is at Bold Antiques. Hello. Hiya. Hi, hi, hi. Who hi. are you? I'm Sean. Sean. Lovely to meet you, Sean. Hi, Sean. Christine. I'm Nigel. Nice to, nice to meet you. So, bold antiques, does that mean they're all bold? Sort of. It's my surname. Oh, OK. <laughs> Fair enough. Sean Bold. <laughs> Sean's shop may be on the dinky side, but it's not short of interesting artefacts. Oh, hello. Look at this. OK. <laughs> it's scary. Sorry, me, no, I was just laughing. <laughs> Have you seen our friend in the corner? Yeah, he's quite cool, isn't he? Yeah. How much is Bob, Sean? We call him Norman. We can do him ah. for 750. Oh. Obviously, I can move a little bit on the price. Oh, okay. Uh, 740. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the moment, I'm thinking about playing dress up because there's a hilarious helmet in the corner and there's um, and it's swords and guns, sadly. But oh, no, I, 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 I will get over that in a minute. And no, no, good... no, not that. You can't have the rest of it. There's is... a spike at the top of your head as we go. That looks quite cool, though. Hey, you so. could channel your inner punk. Oh, yeah, there you go. If you've quite finished in the props department, shall we get back to work? The stuff outside to look at, too. Yeah, this is what I saw on the way in, because this reminds me. <laughs> I think we've got a version of this at home, but it's I love it. It's a very pleasing bit of engineering, isn't it? I like the sewing box, but it isn't hugely old. I think we need to look at genuinely... I think I need your help. I think I'm a bit older than that. Yeah. yeah. What? Pardon? Right. No, sure. <laughs> what? Awkward. Let's catch up with the opposition. How's the Herald, David? It's got a great growl, hasn't it? She does. In the late 60s, my best mate, Bob, he had one. He was driving us to Wembley, and on the radio, suddenly this song came up, Lucy in the sky with diamonds, and it was one of those light bulb moments about, you know, and music and, and life. And... That's so cool. Well, you're looking the part now. You're kind of channeling John Lennon with your glasses, so <laughs> you're reliving the memory. <laughs> Thank you. I, can, I think I can cope with that, Josh. Our groovy pair are heading to Sirencester, just on the edge of the Cotswolds, and birthplace of Cozy Powell, the drummer with Black Sabbath. Not a lot of people know that. Here we go. Do you feel yeah. good? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very exciting, yes, yeah. It is. First oh. time. Well, Sirencester Antique Centre has lots of rooms for you to peruse. But, as it's your first shop, perhaps you could do with a little help from your friend. Now, a little birdie told me that you recently became a grandfather again for the oh, third yes. and fourth time. Yeah. So congratulations are in order. Thank you. And this, yeah. this is exactly why I think of you when I see this, because it's a bit of hobby craft. This is by perhaps a doting grandparent who's wanted to gift their grandchild something original, something unique. And yeah. it's a little money box. It moves. Look at that. It's super sweet. Yeah. It's probably 1950s, 1960s, something like that. OK. And it's just, it's just quite a sweet thing because you've got these little cat motifs, you've got the money box, you've got the donkey, so it appeals to animal lovers, but I think this appeals to family lovers because it's just so nostalgic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look at the price, £48. This is not going to make you a fortune. However, I think it's very sweet. I wonder how you get the dosh out. Yeah, that's a very important <laughs> question. I think you've got to take the wheels off or something. That stops any impulsion to raid the kids' money box. Absolutely. Because it involves a bit of work, time to feel guilt. Does that appeal to you? It does. I think that's the donkey under consideration. Anything else in here? Here we have what is not probably Victorian, but an Edwardian water hopper with right. a nice grape motif on the front. So what's a water hopper? You know, the Victorians, they got the guttering sorted. That was all fine. Yeah. 
but this increased the efficiency of your guttering. As simple as this, you have the drain pipe running down the side of the building. Yeah. If you add this funnel at the top, what they call the water hopper, yeah. you can actually, I think, triple the efficiency of the drain and let it run at full capacity and therefore drain the rainwater off your roof much oh, more right, quickly. Right. So it stopped flooding over the side and it, that would collect the water. If it, I'm correct, it's going to be really heavy because I think this is going to be cast. Yes, it is cast iron. It's so heavy, if you can feel that. Wow. I think it would be perfect now as a planter. It's not going to be used as a water hopper, but I think it's a gorgeous thing and I love that motif of grapes. Yeah. I'm just going to pop it back down because it's so heavy. Can you manage? Yeah, it could be all right. Yeah. There we go. I'm from Scotland, Dave. I'm oh, made of sturdy yeah, stuff. Yeah. Now, there is a label. <laughs> it says, antique water hopper with grape decoration, 65 pounds. Well, that is... Um... They're not asking the earth. No. Does that appeal? I think that's a real goer, you know? I really like it. It's all sounding very promising. Now, how are things back in Wantage? Okay. What? Talk to me about the sewing machine. Singer is one of the most prolific sewing machine makers. It's got a ticket price of £30. Why do you like that? I just think it's aesthetically really pleasing, and I love the black and the gold. Funny enough, they have come back recently. They're quite sort of funky and retro at the moment. Oh, in that case. Yeah, it's a bit mainstream it's a bit now. I'm so, <laughs> ma I'm so mainstream. What do you think of that? Uh, it's very cherubic. It is very... Well, these are satires, like they're goats, half goat, half oh. small child. What do you think? It reminds me, actually, of a similar cot growing up in my childhood, actually, that had this kind of... What do we call this? Gold sort of... Ormolu. Ormolu? Yeah. Ormolu? Yeah, Ormolu. You make this stuff up, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you having instincts for this? Well, I don't particularly like it. Good, good, good selling. But, <laughs> but it's big. It's flashy. Right. It's it's very much in sort of nineteenth century style. You've got this what we call this lyre, as in harp form there. Mm -hmm. But it isn't nineteenth century. It is a modern reproduction. But. All I'm thinking is that this will stand out in the auction room. Right, so it will garner kind of, attention. Exactly. It's a bit of a hit you in the face, you can't miss me, I'm not hidden away in a cabinet. No price on that, though. I mean, it's the kind of thing you'd see on a fireplace at Downton Abbey. The real uh, thing. Yes, lovely show, Downton Abbey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, until you arrived, yeah. you big baddie. <laughs> <laughs> She's still upset about it, clearly. So, that's two potential candidates. Let's see if Nigel can get his haggle on. So, we're very interested in this clock. No, okay. we're not interested. No, we're not interested in this clock. We've got a vague leaning towards this clock. OK. What would you, you know, take it or leave it, laissez-faire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what would you, um, what are you trying to sell it at us for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're really good at yeah. this. Well done. Leave it with me, really, really Mr. Good. Smooth. <laughs> Mr. Smooth. Right, I've got 70 on it. Yeah, good. Um, but look at the stance. Look at that yeah, stance. No, it's quite, it's yeah. quite open, but it's, it's quite... Yeah, I've gone crossed arms quite yeah, defensive. Yeah. There you are. Get manly. I'm going to take a lunge. Yeah. <laughs> oh, suave. And also we're interested in the sewing machine. So if that's 70 and that's 30, that's 100. Well, what, could, like, what could you... Do, for the both? Yeah, for the buy both. one, get one free. It wouldn't quite be free. Oh, but, uh, but <laughs> <laughs> I could do you the pair. 60. That's good. You're a genius I was going to start in at 70 and tell her. <laughs> yes, That's thank really you. good. Yeah. That's known in the trade as having his arm off. You know what? I feel like a passenger here. You are brilliant at this. You don't need me at all. So, let's say £18 for the sewing machine and 42 for the clock. Come on, manly man. I'm really glad that you took the light one. OK. Lovely. And cobwebs. Does the dust come free? I don't yeah, think I can hold this much cool. longer. All right, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Whilst those two wrestle their purchases into the port, Let's see how we're getting on in Siren Sister. What do you think to this? Now, that's got David's name written all over it. So, to someone who knows nothing about Game of Thrones, how important is a dragon? They're the masters of the air, really, and uh, I, I wouldn't fancy Walder Frey's chances against any of them. This is obviously brand new, it's some garden furniture, but oh, yeah. what's nice is that it's not for the garden at ground level, is it? This is a terracotta tile for your roof. This, of course, harks back to the Gothic period when churches had 
gargoyles on the top to ward yeah. off evil spirits. It's been made very recently, yeah. but it's nicely modelled. What I also quite like about it is that at full price, it's quite achievable, £77. But I'm just thinking, perhaps we could really entice the bidders if we could attach your name to it. All right. Maybe add a little bit of a signature, yeah. a little bit of provenance. Yeah, it might bring the way. price down, you never know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Modest. Sounds like it really will have David's name written on it after all. Any more? This here is Murano glass. Now, I've been to Murano in Venice yes. and watched all the glass making. Absolutely fascinating. and I love this stuff. <laughs> £125 for this vase, you might be thinking, why is it so expensive? Yeah. But on the label it explains that it's submerso glass. So I don't know how good your Italian is, but I think mm. we get the word submerged, I think, from submerso something. Oh, like yeah, 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 yeah. And think, so yeah. there's one colour kind of submerged into another. It looks very 60s, 70s to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's £125 worth, but it's certainly a lump of good quality Italian glass. It's not hugely valuable. Yeah. So we'd have to be asking for a huge amount off of the ticket price. Yeah. Well, let's consult our friendly shopkeeper then and have a proper look. Hello, Will. So it was hard to see behind the glass, but it's more green and pink, isn't it? Yeah. And you can see it looks as though the green's just been dropped into it and eventually it's stopped in this... Perfect height. Yeah. It's almost like a diamond when you hold it in your hands. Yeah, yeah. So we don't want to be too cheeky, but obviously we're trying to make a profit. My advice is that it's worth about half of that at auction, but I don't think Will's going to give us half price. <laughs> Will, do you watch Game yeah. of Thrones? I do. I'm a bit unnerved, I'll be honest with you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've made sure uh, Dave is carrying no weapons. All right. Yeah, yeah. The gentle yeah. approach. Yeah, but don't turn your back just in case. Lordy. <laughs> So that makes four items to negotiate over. Has David's uh, persuasive bargaining technique succeeded on that vase? Best he could do on that one would be 75. OK. A healthy discount of, what's that, £50? That's From 125, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty chunky. Could you please do a calculation? Yeah, sure. OK, so we've got 75 is the best deal on the glass. That's right. 48 full price on the donkey. OK. 77 full price on the tile. Yeah. And 65 full price on the water hopper. Uh, that's 265. What do you think, David? It's got to have a one in front of it if we're going to have a chance. Yeah, well, I don't know, 190? 190 is going to be the best absolute squeeze. 190? Yeah. For four items? You think so? Interesting, varied, pertinent? Yeah. yeah. I think it sounds yeah. like a plan. Yeah. Shake the man's hand, David, sounds well, like a deal. Thank you, Will. <laughs> thank you. Nice to do business with thank you. Thank you so much. That's a whole lot of shopping done in that deal. So, £75 for the Murano vase, 40 for the water hopper, 23 for the money box, and £52 for David's dragon. You're a pro! Marvellous. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> Lots of the big spenders. So, what of our Porsche pair? Happy with their purchases so far? I'm nervous about the clock. Why? I don't know, I just, I'm just nervous about it. I feel like it's the sensible thing of the sewing machine. It's just, it's just, I don't know, a folly. Yeah. Sean seemed really happy to have got rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> that made me go, oh. And the layers oh, of dust I, mean, I wanted them at least to be breaking down in tears, going, yeah. no, no, Don't no, shake no. them! <laughs> well, there may be a chance they can add to their hoard without spending another penny. They're winding their way into Wiltshire, to Marlborough for a lesson in the art of metal detecting. Who knows? They could be treasure in the hills. I had a metal detector as a ninth birthday present, um, and I broke it. Oh. So I, and I was never allowed another one, so I'm really actually looking forward to learning about them. <laughs> oh, and how not to break them? Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't give you one. Yeah, probably best. Don't worry. You'll be under the expert tutelage of David Rees, who's been a detectorist for over 30 years. Hi. Hello, Christina. Hello. Hello, Nigel. Nice to meet you. How you are you? Your hand or not? Yeah, I take my. Uh, well, I'll leave oh, it on. You can check my okay. wrist. Let's <laughs> oh, yeah. fist pump. Fist pump. Hi. <laughs> David gives lessons in detecting using the very latest equipment, but the metal detector's history goes back to the American gold rush. 
in those early pioneering days, if you can yeah. imagine, they were sifting for gold, things like that, weren't Panning, they? Right? Panning, you know, yeah. Yeah, um, the and, and the rivers and like, and a lot of stuff would have been missed. Yeah. So the person that could invent a machine that could actually find gold was obviously on a winner, really. So what we should be seeing in Western films is people with these, not with the... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> should be absolutely. Like, should have been a whole We never new... do, do we? We, we never, never see that. See that. These early devices were very rudimentary, however, and didn't work particularly well. A Frenchman, uh, Gustave Trove, a Parisian, uh, was the man that uh, is accredited in the 1800s for uh, coming up with the first machine, really. And then Alexander Graham Bell also got into it that time and, and came up with a much better machine. Bell's detector, however, was devised for a specific medical purpose. On the 2nd of July, 1881, the American president, James Garfield, was shot in Washington, and Bell's machine was used to try and find the bullet lodged in his body. But unfortunately, he was laying on a, a bed made of uh, iron, you know, springs, <laughs> and they couldn't trace the bullet. He didn't die from that bullet wound, but he died of infection a bit later. And then World War I, they were used extensively for uh, clearing the minefields. And I think that's where originally the um, metal detectors started to come into their own, really. And so they had officers trained specially to use these machines. They were quite basic machines, but they could detect iron, basically, you know, which was what the, those mines were made of. And so they were used extensively. It must have saved thousands and thousands Absolutely, of lives. Yeah. And I mean, that's continued because we're still using them these days. Look yeah. at Afghanistan and places yeah. like that, they're still being used. But for the amateur enthusiast, it's the thrill of finding objects from the past that spurs them on. Items of treasure, such as the Staffordshire Hoard, discovered in 2009 and containing over 3,000 items of gold and silver, need to be reported as their property of the Crown. David's own finds might not be as impressive, but they're fascinating nevertheless. What's this? That's a, a cloth seal, uh, a London cloth seal, and that's dated between 16 and 1700, that one. Oh. Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, there's always been a kind of um, a lot of uh, history involved around the Civil War. In, in this part of Wiltshire, you know, oh, okay. Marlborough, or down to Devizes, of course. Maybe there was a small encampment here and someone dropped that. This What's is a that? nice uh, little earth? collection of coins. That was uh, was from a thatch cottage. Uh, oh, that, wow, uh, look at that. Yes. So those have all fused together. Yes. They've been melted in, or in, in a the fire. heat from a fire, yeah. The, the, wow. the, the roof caught fire. Okay. That's amazing. Mm. I, thought, I thought it looked like a bit of a So meteor. that's again from, what, 17th century? That's, uh, that's about that sort of period, yeah. Wow. yeah. I think this is just a, like a nice little buckle from a cricket belt. Oh, oh nice thing. You cute. see the cross cricket bats there. Oh, no, yeah. that's lovely. But as I say, yeah, when you go out, you just don't know what you're going to find. These are quite nice things. Because it's but so you... diverse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very it's diverse. So... Yeah. You're spanning yeah. from, spanning... what, the 17th century yeah. to, yeah. what, the early 20th yeah, century? Yeah, really, yeah. So, no pressure, but I want you to find something of equal calibre. Listen, okay? I'm ready. I'm bo <laughs> I was ready? born. I was okay. born to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's right. go for it. OK. Then. Are we ready? Oh, my gosh, are we going to do this? Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Do you want these back or should I keep them? I think David might want them back, Nigel. <laughs> See what you can unearth for yourself. Good technique, Nigel. Thank you. Very good technique. Yeah, I don't want to alarm you, Dave, but I think mine's broken. Yes. Nothing's happening. Nothing. No sound. Nothing. Oh my goodness me! No, that's no good. Nothing. I no thought good. I'd have found it. Uh, don't forget when you use small <laughs> car. By now. Come on, beep. <laughs> can you shout at it? Does that? Help? Yeah, you can do. I think maybe, <laughs> for the sake of trying to make the auction in time, we should go back to shopping. <laughs> Yep, probably best to get your treasures the old-fashioned way by paying for them. Now, how are our other duo getting on? So how competitive are you feeling? Is there a rivalry between you and Nigel? Not really. We're too fond of each other, you know, and uh, I've seen some people get quite competitive about this sort of thing, but I just want to have a good laugh and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully find something interesting. Oh, they all say that at the start. Just you wait, David. They're all route to the pretty Cotswold town of Tetbury, where every year they run a race where you have to carry a 60-pound wool sack up a local hill. Also home to Top Banana. Five floors. Wow. <laughs> well, it's getting a bit late, so you might not have time to visit them all. £210 left. Let's focus, shall we? Do you know what's really cool? Just down here, immediately caught my eye, this little, I think it's pronounced a wear cup, although spelt uh, wager cup. And they are, I think, German in their origin. Now, I recently got married, and I have to say I'm quite glad you weren't there, Dave, because it was a lovely affair. Um, yes, <laughs> and, well, you know, I have to say, the, the invite seemed to have dried up lately. I don't know why. Uh, well, this is actually part of a wedding tradition. I believe that the top cup that the 
lady or the bride is holding aloft swings and that the idea is that the groom and the bride drink from this vessel at the same time without spilling a drop and oh. it's some sort of good omen for the beginning of their life together. It goes way back, I think it's a medieval thing. Really? Well, now you've told me the background, it makes, uh, it, it makes it much more attractive proposition, I have to say. £90 on the ticket, though. You'll need proprietor Ed to get it out of the cabinet. Let's have a look. Oh, look, it does swing. Yeah. So we could have a try, if yeah. you wanted. Yeah. Before you know it, we'll be betrothed. But I, th <laughs> I think that you take from the top, I take from the bottom. I if this is where the <laughs> loving cup originated from. Could very well be, so I don't know if we can mine's, do it. Mine's already on the floor, I'm afraid. It's, it's, it's on my boots. I think it's a bad <laughs> yeah. And I don't know, at 90 pounds, I'm a wee bit scared. But the question yeah. is, of course, I'm talking you into this. I don't want to do that. Yeah, what do but you I, think I, about I, it? I think I'll go with uh, your instinct, Tash. It's, uh, I, I like it. It's, it's a very... Uh, it feels nice as well. See if Ed can do you a deal, then. Well, we've got 90 on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, look, at, look at the loving couple there. <laughs> look at us. Away. Look at us. Could we not I just mean, call it, that a wedding present it, and be done go, with it? Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If we said to you, 65, and I think that gives you guys a, a bit of profit in there. Dave, it's really your call on this one. I'm tempted to say yes. And How long have you say, been married? Um, 40 years is September. Oh, well, maybe so, then. Yeah, we'll shake on that. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I've been married Thank for two, can I shake? Absolutely. Yeah, cool. Aw, <laughs> oh, sweet. £65 it is then. I always cry at weddings, first time round. Oh, she looks good in the daylight. Oh, she does. She's going to set some hearts on fire yeah. at the auction. Just you Well, we should see. test it out with uh, a drop Single malt. Of... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But not till you've got to where you're going to, eh? <laughs> Having said that, I'm not competitive about this. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe something might come out of the woodwork and I might suddenly... Uh... <laughs> you might catch the bug. Told you so. <laughs> Sleep tight. It's another beautiful morning and our pair of players in the Porsche are comparing notes. How'd you get on yesterday? How was it? It was a good day. Natasha was great. She, she guided me through the labyrinthine world of uh, antiques, and we found, I think, five objects. Wow. It sounds like places. you had a really productive day. I'm getting nervous. Nonsense, Nigel. You made a solid start to your shopping yesterday, getting a good deal on a sewing machine and a very fancy repro clock. Yes, That's exactly. really good. <laughs> Brilliant. Which means you have £340 at your disposal. David, meanwhile, went on a bit of a spree, picking up a wager cup, a dragon roof tile, some Murano glass, a water hopper and a donkey money box. I wonder how you get the dosh out. So he's left with £145, should anything take his fancy. And I hope it's not putting any pressure on you. You don't. You're crushing my spirit. That's no, what you're okay. doing. Shall we go and meet the girls? And... Yes, here's to a good second day. Gentlemen, your experts await. Guten Morgen. Hey, uh. <laughs> How are you? Getting there. Well, I'm getting there. All good. Feeling good. Feeling Let's good. have a sneak right, preview of their buys so far. <laughs> right, shall we show okay, you? Go for it. Right. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. This is what we found yesterday. What do you think's under here, Tad? Oh, yeah, do you want to have a sewing machine? You couldn't possibly <laughs> tell. <laughs> So, come oh, on, Nigel. I did try and tell you. <laughs> your choice? So why your choice, Nigel? <laughs> I don't really know. I liked the mechanics of it. Yeah. And also, we did get it quite cheap, which I can understand why now. 18 for that and 42 for that. Christina, yeah. that's a good price for your clock. Modern, but still a good price. Exactly. I don't particularly like it, but I think it has appeal. <laughs> when you say modern, what I mean... Uh... We got it in the Argos catalogue. <laughs> uh, so that's how modern it is. Ha! Huh. Other catalogues are available. Right, David, your turn. Oh, I like the hopper. Oh my God, it's like Mr. Universe. Wow, yeah. look at the dust in there. Now, that's a hopper. It's it looks really like different a, a, toilet, a toilet system. <laughs> yes. yeah, what you're, a vote of you're confidence. You're just such an old romantic man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Quite envious, but not as nice. I'd rather have a sewing machine. Well, but, yeah. there's more where that com came from because yeah. we've got five pieces in total. We better yeah. get shopping. You better get shopping. Yeah, we'll have a good day, guys. Bon chance, mon ami. Yeah. Bon chance. Yeah. Later on. Now you're all out of earshot. What do you really think? 
I think they've seen through your um, singer sewing machine. It's nothing like public ridicule. I mean, they were practically sniggering. <laughs> I mean, well, I it was very was uncouth. Okay. I thought it would be a bit more couth this show. <laughs> and then we've got Christina's Choice, French clock. It's got some style to it. Well, it's got a very impressive um, slab of marble there, which yeah. gives it a bit of uh, body. And the gold gives it the glitz? Yeah, yeah. OK, so maybe um, we should be a little bit worried. What gave me more joy than anything was Dave wrestling that thing out of the boot. <laughs> he was like halfway through it thinking this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I can see how he, you know, waves he's, swords he's around. He's deceptively him. strong. Yeah. Yeah. Wiry. Well, we'll see who's the heavyweight when we get to auction at Winchcombe. But our first port of call today is Melksham on the River Avon. Aha! This is our boy. There we go. And a date with two little ducks. We divide and conquer. Oh, do you reckon? No, absolutely not. I'll, I'll just come back with some other sewing item. <laughs> wow, would you look at that? Leave the sewing machine. Lots more this way. <laughs> yes, there's much more in stock here. And with £340 in your pocket, you can afford to be tempted. Wow, look at that's that. amazing. Isn't that extraordinary? That is extraordinary. What's... What... So it's a tribal mask. Oh, OK. So you would have worn it for as a ritual. So Amazing. And probably with a price tag to match. Has it got a yeah. price on it? No. I, don't, I can't see one, but I, it looks, yeah. OK, we'll certainly so, so want to... Difficult to get in your bag, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Potentially. That could be one to ask okay. about. This is nice. Oh, that is nice. Oh, my gosh. That has got some serious age to it. I like that. It's very tactile, isn't it? It's got, a, yeah, it's got to weight, it's substantial. What drew your eye to that? Um, honey. That's what I thought it looks honey. like Winnie the Pooh's honey pot. That's wooden carving, right? Smooth yeah. wood. I'm wondering whether that is potentially sick. Well, look at the graining on that. The weight of it and the wear around here would suggest it's some kind of food vessel. But look at all the splits down the side. And if you look inside, it's been repaired quite a lot. So it's obviously been at some point a very valuable or useful tool to somebody. I like that very much. But it hasn't got a price tag on it again, which is worrying. Well, you know, maybe we'll get lucky. What do you think? Positive? I hope so. What would you pay for that? 20 quid. <laughs> but then I don't pay much more. Done. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it quite works like that, Nigel. Let's keep poking about, eh? There's a little cupboard in here. Do you think this is a nook or a cranny? I'm definitely going with cranny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ever in need of a gout stool? Hold your pot. Yeah. They're usually adjustable. Oh, yeah, oh, so this cool. one. So it's got its original leather, so it's probably mm, 1880, 1890. And if you suffered from gout mm. and needed to elevate your ankles. So thing. you'd be sitting here and your feet would be up there? Yeah. OK. Exactly. It's like a sun lounger for a tiny person. It, <laughs> well, oh, look. Oh, it comes up again. Ooh, and there's another one. Oh, so now I'm can... really wishing I had gout. <laughs> or it could just be the footstool for your chair. That's quite cool. Yeah. Once again, there's no price tag on that. Better go and have a word with the man in charge about all your fines. <laughs> and what, what's yeah. the uh, good cop, bad cop? Well, just... Are you going to haggle on this again? You were good well, at it we'll yesterday. Give it, we'll give it a go. Yeah, you were brilliant at it. Right. I'll just stand behind you again. <laughs> Brace yourself, John. Hi, John. Hi. Uh, we've seen a few things. Yeah. See if you can guess which one of them is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we uh, we like or don't like uh, this um, the incredible bird's nose masky thing. Yeah. And there's a stool in the back. Gout stool. And none of them have prices on. This piece, thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. The gout uh, stool. Forty-five. And the nasty is fifty-five. Three nine five. <laughs> what? Ah. Three nine five. <laughs> Oh, God, I can't to sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Completely understandable because, I mean, it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm very sought after in today's market. <laughs> Good, so that's gone. Yes. So 35, 45. Yeah. Which, even with my rudimentary mass, comes out to £80. Pounds. Yeah. Get yeah. in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bearing in mind there's quite a lot of wear on the gout stool. That brings us out about 50 quid for both of them. <laughs> oh, wow, I'm loving your work. I don't think John is. 
I'm at 60. 60? Yeah. I think we're in, aren't we? Do you think we should go for it? Yeah, yeah. Happy? Yeah, come on, John. Yeah. Who's taking that? Sweet. Brilliant. Oh, gosh, look, that's quite... He's oh, up. He's, he's great. Great. He's, pounced he's just about to get 50. his other three gout yeah. stores out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the one you've got has just cost you £35 and your pot is now 25 Well done all round. Thank you very Pleasure. much, John. Thank you. Good you day. are a legend. You too. See you again? Uh, no doubt. Could you send it on to my private quarters? <laughs> Get Lord Grantham there. Right, buckle up in the back and let's make a move. Elsewhere, our Triumph 2, with five items in hand, can afford to take a little break. And it's thirsty work, this antiquing. Having grown up in Yorkshire, I, I have to say, um, yeah, without sounding like a professional Yorkshireman, but I, I love a nice creamy beer with a good thick head on it. Uh, that lasts all the way to the bottom. I'm more of a lager top man myself. <laughs> They're off to the Wiltshire market town of Warminster, home to the oldest working maltings in Britain, where they've been making one of the key ingredients for beer for over 160 years. Lovely. OK. OK, let's do it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a gent. Our two have come to learn about the age-old process of making malt from maltster Robin Apple. Malt is grain, mostly barley, that's been artificially germinated to convert the very starchy content of the grain into a lovely sugary substance called maltose, which brewers and distillers can work with to make alcohol. What I've got here, I've got two samples. This is a sample of barley and that is a sample of malt. It looks the same, but if you were to taste that, that's very bitter and not very taste, tasty. But I invite you to taste that because it tastes lovely. Just as it is? As it is, absolutely. And if Ooh, you remember... <laughs> do, you, do you remember a breakfast cereal called Grape Nuts? Oh, yeah. Because it tastes just like Grape Nuts. Oh, that was a real toothbreaker, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. I used to love it. <laughs> well, that's the same. Back in the 1850s, when this maltings was built, many sources of water were unsafe to drink. Small beer was drunk instead, low in alcohol and much less likely to give you jippy tummy. Because of this, most places had a maltings, just as they would have had a flour mill. Malt was an everyday commodity, a fact exploited by governments down the ages. The malt tax was first introduced in 1644 to help pay for the Civil War. And very quickly, governments realised that actually it was a very inelastic tax. If you raised it by 10%, you got 10% more revenue. You could build a whole fleet of new warships on the back of the malt tax by just jacking up the malt tax. But of course, maltsters tried to evade it, as they would do, because it became quite expensive and onerous, and so customs and excise found themselves having to write very rigorous rules and regulations. And by 1827, there were 101 different set rules by which you had to abide in order to make a batch of malt. For the unfortunate maltster who got all 101 rules wrong, the total fine would have been £13,500 in oh, 1827. Wow, I mean, yeah, in 13... £100 is a lot of money. Well, like I say, yeah. in 1827, you could have built the town of Warminster for £13,500. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this malt house was remodelled in 1879 to adhere to these strict rules. A year later, the malt tax was repealed but the malt made here to this day still follows those traditional methods. What's going on here then, behind us? This is the germination floor, and what we're doing now is we are managing the germination process. We want to convert all of the starch inside that grain into sugar, which is why we're using this very medieval tool out here that's a hand plough. What we're doing is we're ventilating the grain that's started to chit, and it actually wants to grow away with lots of rootlet, and it wants to produce a green shoot. So we have to slow that process down. And of course, the last thing we want, we don't want a lawn out here. We don't want any green shoots. And the great thing about these guys coming to work on these floors by hand Every action that they take on these floors, when they walk away, they then make the decision in their hand, what do I do next and when do I do it? Mm. And that varies all the time. It varies with the weather outside. It, it varies with the variety of the barley. Yeah. And so that's why this method, I think, is special, because this is a very bespoke method of converting that starchy barley into this lovely sugary malt product. After five days on the malt floors, the barley is then fired in a kiln to stop germination and add flavour. Then, Robin's traditionally made malt is bought by craft brewers and home brewers to make beer. 
and I think it's about time we sampled a few, don't you? Right, come on then, Dave, hand over the keys. You're done for the day driving. Yeah, <laughs> I'll just accept gracefully. <laughs> we'll try this, David, but hopefully you can taste the malt coming through. Oh, yes. Well, cheers to you both. Yes, yeah, I won't, thank you. I won't join in, but I'll say <laughs> yes, to, yes. Your, to your good health. Yeah. You want to clash with the water jug and help yeah. yourself? <laughs> I don't think it's quite the same, David. Elsewhere, our other actor and expert are also in buoyant mood. I was in the original cast of Mamma Mia. Who, who did you play? I played a guy called Eddie, who was one of the beach bums on the island who was mates with the best man. Every night I used to do, the guy on stage would sing, knowing me, knowing you, and I'd go, uh -huh. ah, knowing me, knowing you, it's that's the, the best, best I can, can do. do. Well, thanks for the cool music. Those two are making their way to Somerset and Froome, once described as Britain's sixth coolest town. Well, they do have drive-in antique stores. Dead sophisticated. Ooh. This must be the place. With a sizeable £280 still to play with, there's got to be something in here that'll float their boat. Some of it might still be a bit out of their budget, of course. Look at that. That is just incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And what it's is amazing. it? All the, the different crests, different houses. It's beautiful. It's like yeah. something out of Hogwarts. You can imagine that just freestanding somewhere. Mm. As a folly, it would just be amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. The work that's gone into it is quite I'm stunning. I'm sure the House of Bradley's up here somewhere. Yeah, very possible. They've been around for centuries. <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> Cheeky. Now, those look a bit more affordable. Those are cool, aren't they? So they're old oil lamps, OK? Yeah, exactly. Right. So you've got a wall mounted bracket. So you've got your wick in there, your oil reservoir in there. And I assume that, that that's your glass trumpet that would have fit over there. And you would have had that oh, one here. on the wall. OK. I think those are quite cool. English made. They're slightly sort of ecclesiastical, aren't they? And they need a bit of a scrub up, don't they? Well, they do, but that's half the fun. Well, I bet, oh, yeah. For the purchaser, potentially. Yes, of course, yes, yeah. we could add that. And bonuses, you get to do some of your own cleaning. <laughs> could be their USP. Now, out on the road, David and his designated driver are also heading through woods and feeling very chilled about the whole thing. It can be just a bit of a fun rummage around and if we see something we like and if not, then we're kind of home and dry. But you've still got £145 should anything grab you. Park the Herald! Here we go. Ugh. Oh, I've parked a bit close to these lanterns. Nicely done, Natasha. Now, there's lots of space to lose yourself in, so you shouldn't run into your rivals. In fact, it looks bigger on the inside than it does on the outside. Sound familiar, David? Oh, my goodness. I don't think that's for sale, is it? Lost my in God. time and space. It's actually pasted to the wall. It's not much, <laughs> but it's home. Isn't that cool? It is. A uh, convention or whatever, that would be a collector's item. That, yeah. would, that would go for a lot. What about the conventions? Do you go to them? I've been to one or two, yeah. Oh, yeah. you have not? And do you get absolutely mobbed? Yeah, well, I get quite <laughs> a few people who watch one of the franchises that I've been fortunate to be involved in, yeah. Do you a triple threat? Yeah. Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Doctor Who? Yeah. Do they have to wait in line three times to get three different photos of <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Nigel's busy playing his own Game of Thrones. <laughs> this caught my eye from across the way. Uh, well, and, uh, why have you been looking at toilet bowls? <laughs> I mean, it is a very smart loo, isn't it? Can you imagine that? Somebody's. I mean, that would have been. It's not just a. You know, it's not just a, a thunder box, is it? It's a proper loo. I mean, yeah. it would have been incredibly smart if we're. You know, if we're thinking of the scale of. People's Posh loos. bottoms is what you're saying. Yes. Posh bottoms. Yes. If you think that hits the spot, how about this one? Look at that. Yeah. Now, if there was a loo to be had, isn't that magnificent? I love this notion of the lid. Yeah. Yes. That. Because up until that point, you think, oh, it's a gramophone. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, oh, 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 look. It's the most perfect loo. Take a moment. I quite look, this is quite sophisticated because you have a sort of a plungy okay. flush. Loo. And then your <laughs> release would be in there. And well, because I, th I assume that they would have to come and collect that. So, and then you'd send for. Jeeves and yeah. go, yeah. come. 
Well, you should know this. Well, oh, well we didn't do this on Downton. Oh. No, no, I draw the line at that. I'm not a method actor. <laughs> Let's try and raise the tone a little, shall we? Ooh, look, David's got his pens out. If this doesn't make a fortune, Dave, then I just have no idea what will. <laughs> Wish I showed your face. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, old kids. We've been caught in the act. What are you doing? What's going on here? I'm not sort of allowed to do graffiti. Christina, yeah. we're adding provenance to our lot. You're adding provenance. Not not history. More. Who's handled this item? Where has it been? It's currently being signed by Walder Frey, aka David Bradley. Is this naughty, Christina? Is this cheating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes a quote. Can it's... you read it out with oh. full gusto? Yeah. Oh, oh, hang on. The Lannisters send their regards. <gasps> okay, yeah. come on, seriously. Yeah. We've got to go. We've got to sign something, buy something. Yeah, that's <laughs> really, <laughs> really pleased for you. Subtlety isn't everything, you know. <laughs> yes, I've noticed that in your work. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it, Nigel. He's not worth it. Besides, you've still got stuff to buy. Best go and have a word, eh? Now, Carl, we're looking for a bargain. Yep. So we like that screen. It is a bargain. Something like that would cost you about 38,000. 38,000 pounds. Yeah. How much have we got left? Dream on, Nigel. So we'll switch to plan B. There's a pair of oil lamps with wall mounted. Well, the, church, just, yeah, uh, the church lamps, yeah. Don't they church yeah. lamps, are they? They're church lamps, yeah. And the other one is the stoneware loo. toilet. 60 pounds. For the loo? Yeah, for the loo, yeah. Okay. And then what yeah. about the wall brackets? Yeah, about 125. 125? Can't. It's never money, is it? We're gonna, oh, we're going to have to do better than that. Yeah, Carl. 150. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mess with Carl. I think instinctively we should hunt brackets and not toilet bowls. We like them, but not at that price. Any, can you do anything for us? I'll tell you what I'll do. I, I, I'll get them down to 85 pounds. That's a trade price. 75, and you got yourself a deal. Come on then, last of the day, done. Yeah? We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. Come on. Thank you very much, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I can't feel my hand anymore. <laughs> Ow. And with that strapping discount, I think our work here is done. Right, you guys. Well, it, wow. it ain't over yet. We'll see you for the showdown. See you for the showdown. Yeah. Exactly, I love it. <laughs> Things just got competitive. See you at the auction. <laughs> yeah. Sweet dreams. It's showtime for our two amateur antiqueurs as the curtain rises on auction day. Dave, the moment of reckoning is upon us. So this is my first auction experience, so I'm kind of yeah, excited about too. it. Yeah. I'm just interested in seeing what mine and Natasha's judgment will bear fruit or not. Mm. Um, Maybe a couple of dried old plums or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I say. After starting off in Oxfordshire at Wantage and heading southwards, we've come back to the Cotswolds and the genteel little town of Winchcombe. Hey. There goes the neighbourhood. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. That was really discreet arrival there. Well done. Yeah, I Good thought work. we need to wake up the neighbours. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. Oh. You all right? Very, Very well. well. How are you? OK, get in there. Let's go make some money. He's hoping that British bespoke auctions is the place to do it in them. David and Natasha spent £255 on five auction lots, like this little sweetheart. It's a fun thing. It's not practical. It's not practical. Okay. Therefore, it's out. Do we think this is going to... I mean, I'm not intimidated by this at all. Well, you know what? I think you probably should be. Oh, really? Mm. Nigel and Christina also bought five lots for a total of £195. Gout? Stool? Anyone? I have to say, there's something a little bit unattractive and yet weirdly appealing about it. Yes, that's right. It's, uh, it's very watchable. I should think a bit of uh, analysis, you know, for a budding young psychiatrist, that would appeal. <laughs> Obviously, an original. It's yeah. Not like a copy, but... Victorian, I think. That yeah. could make a profit, for sure. It's getting busy in here, and bidders are queuing up online, too. So let's see what's caught the eye of auctioneer Nicholas Granger and his able assistant, Bella. This is a great piece. Walder Frey, Lord of Riverrun. This will make a fantastic wedding present and an investment for the future. These tiles, I think, are going to be worth quite a lot of money in the future. So put your money where your mouth is, and I think that could be a good one. So a pair of Victorian oil lamps with brass fittings, wall mounts. Quite collectible because there's a pair. That's unusual. I think they'll do quite well. Mind your ear. <laughs> Thanks, Nicholas. I bet he gets through a lot of suits. 
Right, you lot, let's get settled in. Uh, yeah. Ooh, exciting, isn't it? You ever been to an auction with a parrot? <laughs> Will our first lot be a high flyer or for the birds? Nigel's sewing machine next. I feel a stitch up coming on. How much did you pay? Eighteen pounds. Ah. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll start the bidding on the second sewing machine. Okay, he'll start it off at fifteen pound. At fifteen, we have and for eighteen pound now. At eighteen in the room, that surprised me. That's three pound more than I thought. At eighteen pound now. At eighteen, looking <laughs> looking for twenty now. Twenty now. At twenty in the room. Oh. That's twenty. And two. Okay. Are you a ventriloquist? Twenty would like to go. At twenty-two and five, sir. 25 what? at 22 what? at the back of the room. What? Another £2. At £22. Pounds. Oh, oh, bravo. Bravo. Yeah. Bravo. Yeah, Sold respect, to David respect. Bradley. <laughs> uh, they're not laughing now, are they, Nigel? <laughs> I'm a natural. I'm an absolute natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, David's hefty bit of Victorian drainage. Who's starting off with twenty pounds on that? At twenty pounds, got to be worth twenty pounds. At twenty pounds here, and looking for twenty-two pounds. Looking for twenty-two pounds. We have twenty on this. It's not a strong start. It's got to be worth more surely. Looking for twenty-two. At twenty-two, looking for twenty-two. At twenty-two in the room. At twenty-two in the room. Thank you. At twenty-two in the room now. Twenty-two. Looking for twenty-five elsewhere. At twenty-two pounds because you haven't included the drain pipes. At twenty-two pounds and we short. That's going once, twice. Shutting. At twenty-two pounds then to the room. Oh, me and my mouth. Oh well. No cast iron guarantees in this game. <laughs> you nearly gave yourself oh, a double no. hernia for that. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel's bit of tree next. His sycamore pot. OK, he'll start me off with this £40, 40 I've got now. Looking for £42. Oh, yeah. At 40 Profit. with me now. At £40, looking for £42. Two on the net now. At £42, running on the net now. At £42, yeah, running on the net now. In the rain, £45. Selling it. £42, then. Five. Oh. Is that a profit or a loss? I think it's a profit. It's a profit, yeah, it's yeah. A profit. yeah. OK, it's fine. Yeah. OK, I'll take that. And not a bad little profit at that. Good spot, Nigel. We're just yeah. cruising Level along. Pegging. We're waiting for the big... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that after tax? <laughs> the wedding cup next. Natasha was a bit nervous about this one. At twenty pounds, should we get it going at twenty? Twenty, I have twenty here. Looking for twenty-two. With you, madam, at twenty-two. Bidding in the room. Thank you. At twenty-two, twenty-five, and twenty-eight, madam. Would you like to go? Twenty-eight in the room, and thirty, sir. At thirty, pretty little thing. Thirty-two on the net as well, and thirty-five, sir. At thirty-five, sitting in the chair. Thirty-five. Sir. So you've got bidders in the room. You've got bidders on the net. Amazing. Yeah. You've, yeah. you've just got to give up the acting and get into the antiques. Get into antiques. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people have been saying that for years. <laughs> at thirty-eight pound on the net. Going once, twice, and selling at thirty-eight pounds to the net. We did think it was a wee bit risky. Yeah, not the happily ever after you were looking for. Well, you know, we've not quite made enough money to maybe fund a wedding, but certainly to buy a nice wedding gift. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think you've done... Yeah. You've done yeah. Well, brilliant. maybe enough for a cheap flight to Torremolinos or something. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel and Christina's ecclesiastic oil lamps now. Will they shine? And sign the bidding at twenty pounds. We give it twenty-two now. And two with you, madam, sitting down. down, 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 down. They look nicer on the telly than in real life. I have to say. <laughs> Don't say the way. Twenty-two with you, madam, in the room. Looking for twenty-five now. And five on the net now. Thank you. I think that bird's bidding. Would you like to go? At twenty-eight pound in the room. At twenty-eight. Looking for yeah. thirty now. Twenty-eight with you, madam. These are survivors. And they make quite a loss. Yeah. Eight pounds then to the room. Everything that you did with the singer sewing machine has now just been wiped out. The singer sewing machine's looking like brilliant. <laughs> brilliant idea. Yeah. Oh dear, their first loss. It's gone a bit gloomy. We'll get it back, don't worry. That's the spirit. Now, David and Natasha's sweet bit of folk art. Here we go. Moneybox Live. Let's hear it for the donkey. We'll start the bidding on that, ladies and gentlemen, at 20. At 20 pounds, we have now looking for 22. Looking at 22, that's something we've got up here now, and two and five and eight. And looking for 30 pounds. Looking for 30 now. <laughs> we're 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 away, that way. On the net now, we have. At 30 pounds on the net at 30, looking for 32. And two on the net. At 32 on the net, looking for 35 now. Oh. Looking for 35. 32 bid enough. Someone's at 32. Five at 35, and looking for 38 now. At 38, 35. Okay, we're in trouble. Nigel might have to leave. Selling at 38. At 38 pounds. Yes. And that, David, is how you get the dosh out. We made some money! Yeah. <laughs> Time for Christina's bit of bling now. And yes, Nigel, or Malou is a word. It's a very nice-looking thing. Uh, plenty of bang for you up there. It's lovely. And it's flanked by two youthful cherubs. A bit like David and Nigel. Okay, oh, smoothie. Would you like to start the bidding at, bidding at £50? Looking for £50 on that. Have I got 50 in the room on the net? We're looking for £50 on that. Looking for 50 on the net at £50. Thank well, you. Well done, Thank God my agent's looking watching. Looking for £55 <laughs> elsewhere. 50 on the net, thank you. Selling at 50 once, twice, at £50. Then I'll be sure. And sold to the net. Thank you. 
Oh, it's a wee bit of a profit. Sad. Wow, that should have done better. Yeah. It's that big lump of Italian glass next. Who'll start the bidding on this, ladies and gentlemen? At £30, looking for £30 in the room on straight away at £30 and on the net as well at 32 needs to be. At 35 38 madam, would you like to go? 38 looking for 40 looking for 40 and 2 she likes it, and she two, likes it. And 5, we're looking for, looking for 50. 50 and 5. 10, and 60, move up in 10. 55 on the net. 20. 60 pound or 60 in the room, 90, 60 and 5. And 70, sir, and 70 and 5. And 80, sir, and 80 and 5, madam. 85 and 90, sir. 90, would you like? 90, thank you. And 5, madam. 95, 95. 110. 100 pounds. At £100 in the room and giving fair warning, are we sure? Selling for the lovely Murano glass. Fantastic, you guys. £100, oh, are we done? Oh, wow. Wow. That's more like it. Bravissimo. That is brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. It's isn't it? Yeah. Nigel and Christina's last lot now. Don't put your feet up just yet. Got to be on £30. In the room at home, it's vintage at £30. Looking for £30. With you, madam, at £30. I know, I know you're a red wine drink. At £30, madam, at 30 in the room, at 30. Looking for 32 elsewhere. At 30 in the room, anyone want to go 32? We've got 30 bit in the room. Must Sadly be a flying off the shelf. At 30 bit in the room, looking for 32. At 30 with you, madam. Oh, Come on, Gout, still. £30. You can do it. Looking for 32. At £30, then are we going to sell it? At £30 only, are we sure? At oh, £30, enjoy the red wine too. Sold to you, madam. Ouch, that's a bit of a pain. <laughs> In the oh, you've been unlucky there. The yeah. Oh, it's the story of our sale, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, no. Not one, I don't want I can't talk about it. Anymore. Right, last up is David's dragon. Has he added star quality or simply defaced a lovely bit of terracotta? And we're going to start off on this with commission bids on this at £140 with Ooh. me. At 140, Ooh, at 140, good. looking for £150 at 140 with me, 150, looking that's for 160 now. 160 in the room, 160, 170, 170. 180, sir, 180 in the room at £180, 180 or on the net, 180, 190, sir, 190 in the room, 190. There we go. And 200, Even sir, the parents like interested. Yeah. At 190, we've got, at 190 in the room with you, sir, at 190. And looking for 200 at 190 in the room and 200 here and 20, sir, would you like to go? 220, at 220 in the room. <laughs> oh, yes. In the room bidding at 220 pounds. David might be kind to you, sir. <laughs> looking to 240 now, looking for 240. At 220 pounds, I'm going to give fair and final warning. At 220 pounds once, at 220 pounds twice. Selling at 220 pounds. <laughs> well, if that's not the mother of dragons, I don't know what is. Well done, David. Thank goodness for Lord Walder Frey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not everybody says that. <laughs> but fantastic time. Well Thank done. You. Well done. Yeah. I think we know who's won, but let me tell you the gory details. Nigel and Christina set off valiantly with £400, but after auction costs, they made a loss, ending up with £346 and fourpence. David and Natasha started out with the same amount, but after sale room fees, they pulled off a profit. So they are the victors with £487.76. All profits go to children in need. Well, that was fantastic. Well done, Dave. Well, yeah, well done, you folks. Antique and, sleuth. Uh, well done, everyone. Thank you, Tash. That was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> this is goodbye. <laughs> oh, oh, this is all. Oh. I don't want to be oh, No, well, it won't. It's uh, out of the I hope. Come on, Superstar. Let's <laughs> roll. <laughs> bye bye, thank you. <laughs> Typical actors always making a grand exit. <laughs> well, that was a blast. That was really good. <laughs> that was just flown by. It has. I'd like to do that all again. I really would. Yeah, I bet you would. I'd yeah. like to. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Cheerio, then.